Now to one of the great World War II photographers whose real story remains largely untold. Lee Miller courageously captured the horrors of World War II on her camera, defining that war despite major pushback simply because she was a woman. Well, now she's the one caught in the lens as the award-winning actress Kate Winslet plays her in the new film, Lee. I'm heading to the front. That's not what I thought you were gonna say. Ready to go? And I recently met up with Kate Winslet in New York to talk about it. Kate Winslet, welcome to our program. Thank you for having me. It is wonderful for me anyway, and for the general audience, I'm sure, to see you playing one of the most illustrious war correspondents of the 20th century. What made you choose this character, who really wasn't very well known for what she was really best at? Well, I think it, uh, it's probably exactly as you say. She wasn't well known um, and she wasn't revered, I felt, for the right reasons. I knew who Lee Miller was and I was aware of her work as a photographer and I knew what she looked like. But I found that as I started to really dig into the rest of her life, the sort of headline description of her was former muse, actually not even the, a uh, former muse and ex-lover of Man Ray, ex-cover girl, ex-vogue model. These sort of, these kind of reductive things that uh, reduced her in a way, reduced her power, infantilized her, sort of stuck her in a moment in history that she couldn't wait to get away from. Man Ray, of course, for those who don't know, the great surrealist artist um, of the 20th century. And, and in fact, it wasn't until after she died that her son found boxes of her diaries and photos hidden away in the attic. It's almost like she didn't want to tell. She didn't want to let on. Why do you think that was? I don't think it's a case of want. I think it's a case of couldn't. I think it was a case of so many people had terrible debilitating PTSD after World War II. And Lee was no exception to that. In fact, quite the opposite. It re-triggered in her the trauma of something that happened to her as a child. And I think the level of exposure to such extreme horror as they witnessed during the war, it cracked her open and I think revealed old wounds that she simply had to do her very best to close. And part of that was quite literally closing her photographs and prints into boxes, shutting them away, putting them in the attic and never speaking of it. And it's absolutely true that Anthony Penrose had no idea what his mother had done during World War II until after her death in 1977, and he found those boxes. And he did write the book on which this film is based. Yeah, yeah. which is pretty great tribute from a son who had a difficult relationship with his mother. Yeah, so Lee, because of her trauma and because she got pregnant with him unexpectedly just after the war, she found it extremely hard to be a mother. She had a dangerous relationship with alcohol, and he has talked about how fractured their relationship was, even describing it as caustic at times. I recently heard him say that until he opened those boxes and started to read her articles about the siege of San Malo and look at those images, he said, I just thought that she'd been this useless old drunk. And here she was revealed to me as being so much more than I ever could have imagined or ever could have hoped. And it's been a phenomenal journey for him piecing together who she truly was but coming to understand why she had been the way she had been to him as a mother. It's really amazing that we have brought this up so early because it goes right to the heart of what it is to be a woman and a woman at work and a woman who does dangerous things. Let's sort of start a little bit at the beginning before the very famous picture of her in Hitler's bathtub. She wanted to go cover the British war effort and she wasn't allowed, right? Yes, she was, she was initially 
after she had decided that being a war correspondent for British Vogue in order to convey information to the female readers of British Vogue, she invented that job. And initially she was, yes, she was given the task of going and photographing, as you say, the women, the, the, the pilots ferrying bombers between bases in the women's quarters at White Waltham, et cetera, et cetera. But she was absolutely determined to go to the front line. And women were not allowed. They were not. Um, Lee was one of approximately four or five uh, US correspondents who did earn their accreditation to be able to go. But even that fight, and even when she got there, as we see in the film, she's told no women in the press briefing. I mean, the, the utter outrage. And what I loved and still love and will forever love about Lee is that she led her life with intention and grace integrity and resilience, redefining femininity already 80 years ago in the way that we live now. And this was a woman who not only knew that she had already earned her place at the table, but was determined to sit at the head of it. And that for me, in terms of a global message about female leadership is phenomenal and important.